So one of the important pieces to represent this medium throughout the Americas is this beautiful feather headdress that is anecdotally called Monte Kusoma the second. So Montezuma is a second, like Shield Jaguar, that's sort of helpful. He's the second one with that name. And we think the closest to what his real name was what is Mote Kusoma, Mote Kusoma. But if they get anywhere near, you know, <laughs> if they get close. The real one is in Vienna. This is an interesting a little aside about, it was given, you know, gifts were given. Cortez got together a bunch of exotica and sent it over to the king to show him how cool this place was. There were acrobats who came and they brought rubber balls, you know, and the, Europe didn't have rubber balls. Rubber balls, all sports, if your boys only care about basketball and soccer, it all came from the Americas. They figured out rubber, the Olmecs figured out what you had to do to make rubber bounce. All, all ball, ball sports. It's called the Mesoamerican ball game and the kids love to read about the ball game and all that stuff about the ball game. Anyway, it's in Vienna because we think it was in that set group of presents. And you know, the Habsburgs were Spanish, and then they had all of, uh, well, they were Spanish, and all their cousins and everybody was all the other rulers, so lots of connection. So there's feather work that's preserved in Vienna. The, in the Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City is a copy of it. And you can, this is kind of like the Elgin Marbles, or Elgin Marbles problem, you know, of, Who's got the real one yeah. and who's got, you know, it probably ought to be the other way around. But recently, look for more current pictures of it. They cleaned it and restored it. So there are, and there's an article about that if you want to, I don't know if you want to bring in. That is the real one. If it's all kind of straggly at the end of the feathers, it's the real one. Well, the Anthropology Museum opened in 1964. So I think right around yeah, there. Okay. Yeah, much later. Where is that again? Mexico City? Okay. Yeah. Museo de Antropología. It's one of the world's great museums, if you ever get a chance to go. It takes days to go through it. Days. It's where the calendar stone is. Um, the Coyolxauhqui stone is in uh, the Museum of the Templo Mayor, which is its own museum, another fantastic museum. So those are Quetzal feathers, Q E. Q-U-E-T-Z-A-L, Quetzal. It's a bird, a beautiful green bird with some red and some white. Um, it's what's being shown as the feathers coming off of Maya people's heads, the big long feathers. They're all Quetzal feathers. What's extraordinary about them is the Quetzal A is very, very shy. It does not exist where the Mexica were. Uh, they had a colony down close, down towards Central America, and probably that was one of the reasons, was to get the chocolate, cacao, and to get the Quetzal feathers from the jungles of Central America. These feathers are the tail feathers from the male Quetzal. They only grow two or three, one, two, or three, two, to, 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 to fly. So if you catch one, if you pull them all out, they can't fly, they can't attract a mate. So you can only take one at a time, ideally. And so there are 500 of them. <laughs> now the Mexica did have a beautiful zoo and aviary in Tenochtitlan. So they might have been breeding them and stuff like that. They had an incredible everything, the whole world, their world came to Tenochtitlan, a marketplace where 25,000 people would go to the market. Um, it's a beautiful description. I think I might have it in the guide of what was sold at the marketplace there. Um, and then these, the zoo and the aviary. The um, bright blue feathers are the blue cotinga. The blue cotinga. And I can't remember what the red ones are, but it's in my guide. And there's little bits of gold. Now, the, you know, the Spanish are always going for the gold. The gold not much gold in Mesoamerica, okay? The gold source is northern South America, Colombia. That's one of the largest ones in the whole world. And the gold goes down, you know, it goes down the, from the mountains in the rivers and stuff. So there's lots of gold in Costa Rica and Panama, lots of gold in Ecuador and Colombia. As you go further north, eh, eh, you know, <laughs> you got, you have jadeite. Jadeite comes from 
the Guatemala, the, sor the main source of jadeite is in s the southern Guatemala, but this is a trade item and you just have a very small amount. So the Spanish were really disappointed. There was some making of some earrings and a few little things, but it's more of an accent. It's not, you know, they weren't clad in gold the way the people were in Costa Rica and Inca, all the way down through from Costa Rica southward. That's the gold and silver, you know, mecca. So this, that, that little part would go on his head, and he would project himself up two, three feet higher than himself in this huge corona uh, around his head. He would be the big bird. So it's also shamanic. You can say this is him wanting to be a bird. And he's green, the color of nature and rain and jadeite and all that's precious and all that's growing. And um, they like to put green. Green and blue are basically the same color. They didn't have a separate word for the two. And then red is sort of is its opposite. So having those three colors, he's, rather, he's inclusive of the important. Um, and he's precious. He's the most precious guy. So we don't know for sure that it's Maltecusomas, but since feathers don't survive that well in the moisture climate, it probably wasn't one of the early kings. So it's more likely that it was his, if it was there for Cortez to give as a gift. I like to start with that one. And feather work was important all through the Americas. Every culture that had any access to birds was going to be clothing themselves in the birds. It's also taking on the flight. It's as if you, you inside can, can fly. And you have experiences of flying are endemic in visions. <laughs>